Good morning, everybody. Um, thank you very much for giving us the opportunity to give you an update on Ruxone or idebinone and pulmonary care in Duchenne muscular dystrophy. Um, I have three agenda points for this morning. I would like to spend a little time to remind ourselves again on the medical need for treatment of respiratory function loss in patients with DMD. Then I will summarize very briefly the outcome of a successful phase three trial that we conducted already earlier, the DELOS trial as we call it, in patients not taking concomitant steroids. But most importantly is the third bullet, which is a trial that is just about to start, has started both in Europe and in the United States, uh, a long-term trial on patients or with patients on concomitant steroid use. So with this in mind, I would like to just start with saying that there's an urgent medical need for effective treatment of respiratory illnesses associated with Duchenne muscular dystrophy. As compared with age-matched peers, boys of all ages and stages are declining in respiratory function and strength. And this happens mostly after boys have lost their ambulation. So with age, DMD patients develop respiratory complications which may become even life-threatening. These are characterized as ineffective cough, nocturnal hypoventilation, sleep disordered breathing, and daytime respiratory failure. How do we measure pulmonary function or respiratory function? This is done in hospital spirometry. We measure flow volume curves as shown here. And you see to the left a cartoon, and to the middle and to the right you see actual examples of a healthy individual, a boy, and an age-matched DMD patient. And what you can see is on the x-axis we show the volume, the lung volume of the individuals, and on the y-axis we show the speed with which patients or individuals can exhale and exchange air from the lungs. And you can easily see that in an age-matched DMD boy, both the lung volume and also the peak expiratory flow is about half of what it should be compared to the age-matched individual. And this is actually further progressing over time, which causes medical complications. So if you plot this now for two, the two parameters most, most uh, frequently studied, forced vital capacity as percent of predicted, or peak expiratory flow, PF, as percent of predicted, you see that patients at age 10 years roughly, they are falling below the 80% threshold of, of lower limit of normal. So from then onwards, clearly, they have reached a stage where lung function is no longer normal. And you can see that over the 10 years that follow, there's an almost linear and parallel decline in both parameters until patients reach a floor around 30% where actually assisted ventilation is needed. So we are interested really to look at this age range between 10 and 20 years of age where this respiratory function is declining and we try to slow that process down. I'd like to also illustrate a little bit that we need to do more education around this topic because although there are standard of, care guide, standard of care guidelines available, currently I think there's still more need to raise awareness about pulmonary function loss. And the respiratory function or pulmonary function decline increases clearly the disease burden and risk of serious complications, like disturbed sleep due to increasing nocturnal hypoventilation, ineffective cough, and therefore inefficiency to clear the lungs and airways from mucus, increased frequency of, of bronchopulmonary complications, and ultimately daytime respiratory failure. So there's a vicious cycle that starts in the patient at around whatever, age 10 or so, where uh, the decline in respiratory function, uh, this is the field in red, leads to decreased ability to cough and clear the airways, which then causes recurrent infections, which again weakens the respiratory function. So this visual, cy visual cycle goes on for years and brings down the overall pulmonary capacity of the patients. How can we know that? With, if, we, if we measure the peak expiratory flow to the left or forced vital capacity to the right in falling increments of 10%, you see that the number of patients that need hospitalization due to respiratory complications is increasing. There's a clear correlation between loss of pulmonary function and the risk of being hospitalized for consequences of these. There's guidelines in the literature that say that a certain threshold of lung volume, forced vital capacity, are meaningful. For instance, if you fall below 50%, you have, you're considered to have moderate respiratory insufficiency. 
But if you fall below 30%, you have high risk of hypoventilation, which need attention by the clinicians. And as I said, this is guidelines where actually standard of care recommendations are linked to crossing certain thresholds of pulmonary function. For instance, if you fall as a patient below 30%, as I said, high risk of hypoventilation, that needs that there's a mandatory post-operative use of non-invasive ventilation recommended by standard of care guidelines. So we have started at Santerra to raise awareness of frequent monitoring of pulmonary function in the clinical setting following the guidelines that have been published by a number of experts. Switching gears now and talking to our clinical program with our lead molecule idebenone or Raxone as we call it uh, as, as a trade name, we have started the clinical development program back in 2005 with the so-called Delphi program. And you will see that we are the company that tends to name our clinical trials after Greek islands. So stick with me with that. So the Delphi program I'm not talking about today, but I will start with the phase three Delos trial. That as indicated uh, on this chart started already in 2009 and already read, read out in two, uh, 2014. And this trial was run in patients not taking concomitant steroids. The summary of the trial is, is shown here, and I think it would be good if we concentrate to the left. So the study medication that was tested against placebo was an oral tablet of idebenone. Patients 10 years and older were enrolled, irrespective of their ambulatory status. It was a phase three pivotal trial, randomized and placebo controlled. It was run in 17 centers in Europe and United States. And it was a test of efficacy of idebenone in patients not taking concomitant steroids. The trial ran 52 weeks and is already reported out. So you see to the right a number of publications that have resulted from the outcome of this trial. So I will not go back and summarize the main results of this trial again, but I would like to come back to what I showed you before in talking about these thresholds that are uh, reflected in the clinical literature. And we have now done post hoc analysis of the trial of the Delos trial and asked the question whether there are fewer patients or what proportion of patients actually fell below any of these thresholds in the both treatment arms, in the placebo group or in the active treatment group. And although not formally powered for this analysis, what you see here is in each of these groups or thresholds, 50%, 40%, 30%, we calculate the proportion of patients falling below any of these uh, clinically relevant thresholds. And you see a consistent picture that fewer patients on Raxone treatment actually cross these thresholds. This is in line with previous findings where we could demonstrate clearly that the treatment of Raxone in this clinical trial against placebo slowed down the loss of pulmonary function. This is also reflected in the proportion of patients who lost the capacity to cough efficiently. A peak cough flow of 160 liter per minute is recognized as a clinical threshold uh, below which you cannot no longer effectively clear your airways for mucus. And in this analysis, which was a pre-specified analysis of the trial, we saw that there were clearly fewer patients in the active treatment group, in Raxone group, uh, compared to placebo that fell below that threshold. And consequently, we also looked at data from the safety uh, analysis, looking at the proportion of patients who experienced bronchopulmonary disease and who needed antibiotic use for the treatment of these bronchopulmonary disease, and also how many patients actually were hospitalized due to these consequences. And you see in these three little charts that in each of these analyses, there were fewer subjects reporting fewer events of bronchopulmonary disease or antibiotic use. For example, there were in total 220 days of uh, bronchopulmonary disease reported in the placebo group against 82 days in the active treatment group. Importantly, there were also fewer hospitalization due to respiratory events in the Raxone group compared to placebo. And this is unquestionably clinically relevant. Now let me switch gears now and talk about the new trial, the CIDAROS trial as we call it, which has, been, which has started both in Europe and the United States. Now this trial, in contrast to the previous DELOS trial, is in patients who are on concomitant steroid, stable steroid dose. Why is that important? Although it is clear that steroids are recommended for the treatment is Duchenne muscular dystrophy and clearly have a benefit, there's also emerging evidence now that once patients have started to decline in respiratory function, their decline rate is not different between patients on steroids and those off steroids. This has now been published uh, by multiple groups and the largest data set comes from the Synergy uh, group and they have, about, they have published that as well. 
So what we know now is although you, you may benefit in other aspects from steroids, your lung function or pulmonary function is not much uh, affected once you have reached a certain threshold of clinical relevant decline, which is the 80% level. So that is the aim of this new trial, which we call the CIDAROS trial. So again, it's a placebo-controlled trial against active uh, idebinone or raxone. And we enroll patients 10 years and older. It's, a, again, a phase three trial, randomized placebo-controlled, which is conducted in 63 centers, both in the United States, Europe, and one center in Israel. It is a 78-week trial, so patients are on, on medication for 78 weeks, and they are randomized one-to-one -one on active or in placebo. Uh, the, the study is followed by an open-label extension where everybody who completes the trial will receive active treatment uh, for at least one year. And I would like to go on and just say the main inclusion criteria. So you have to have, obviously, a confirmed diagnosis. 10 years and older is the age limit. There's no upper age limit. That's important. You have to have a certain level of respiratory function decline. And um, you should be on stable steroid use for at least 12 months prior to enrollment. Important aspect, this is a trial that allows non-ambulant patient in, and there's no upper limit of age. And that's very uh, important. And also, there's no pre-selection of uh, any specific mutation type that would be mandatory. We do stratify patients according to respiratory function at baseline and whether they use daily or intermittent steroid treatment. If you would like to learn more about this trial, first of all, I invite you to visit our poster and we have a little booth where we have some information there. But also we have now a website, sidrosdmd.com, where we update on the availability of information on enrol enrollment criteria and active sites. This is the current picture of centers in the United States. And again, as I said, this will be updated regularly. Please visit our, our website. You see the active enrollment status in, in the US and in Europe as well. Now let me just finish with uh, the regulatory update. As of today, um, we are seeking approval, early approval based on the available DELOS data in patients not taking steroids in territories like Europe uh, and outside also in the United States. We have uh, currently under review by the European Medicines Agency and SwissMedic a marketing authorization application. Um, recently, our drug, Raxone, was designated by the UK regulatory body, MHRA, as a promising innovative medicine for the treatment of DMD. Uh, the CIDAROS trial, as we have now started, uh, will provide evidence of efficacy in patients on concomitant steroid use. And the combined data set from the DELOS and the CIDAROS trial eventually would allow us a label for DMD patients uh, to treat respiratory function decline irrespective of their glucocorticoid use status. My last slide is just hot off the press. It is a, a news that we released last week. Uh, the UK regulatory agency, MHRA, has issued a very positive scientific opinion on Raxone and granted the early access, access to medicine scheme for patients in the UK. That's a special program that allows access to the uh, emerging treatments before regulatory authorities in Europe have granted access. And, and you can actually see as publicly available the indication for which it is currently allowed. It's for patients 10 years and older for, to treat pulmonary function decline who are not taking concomitant glucocorticoids. And with this, I would like to thank you for your attention. And if you need any further information, we have a booth out there and a poster for more information on the CIDROS trial. Thank you very much.